My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, I'm going to show you how to not burn down your Jeep. Oh yeah, and we'll install 12 volt USB sockets. So unlike newer Jeeps, my Jeep does not have a 12 volt socket in the cargo area. I knew I've always wanted one back there, you know, maybe a couple of USB ports just so I can charge stuff like a fridge, camera batteries, the phone. You know, the cargo area is a perfect place because it's easily accessible, right? Especially when you're overlanding. And my goal was to plug it directly to the battery. This way, I didn't have to turn the ignition on every time I wanted to charge something. Because right now, all the auxiliary stuff that I have on the Jeep, you have to turn the ignition on if like you want to charge your phone or if you want to turn on the lights. Like you have to turn the ignition on and I didn't want to have to do that when I'm charging stuff, right? So I knew that I wanted to plug it directly to the battery and I knew that I would have to add a switch. That way the socket doesn't continuously draw power from the battery because on the USB ports itself, there's like a little LED light. So if I don't put a switch, that's gonna constantly draw power from the battery and eventually kill it. So I wanted a switch, I can just turn it on when I need to charge something and then turn it right back off. Or keep it on when the Jeep is in motion because then the alternator is charging the battery anyway. So it was a really simple thing to do. I wasn't gonna do like a whole install video on it because why? There's like tons of videos online on how to do this. You wanna do it, then go look it up, right? Super simple project. I actually did it a couple of months ago and I thought that was going to be the end of that story, but apparently it was not. So basically this is what I installed. It's a 12 volt socket here in the trunk of the Jeep. Um, you have your 12 volt regular and then you have one that has two USB sockets. Those are wired to the switch. Uh, it's one of those covered switches because I don't want it turning on on accident every time I put a uh, car go back here so this just helps protect the switch when you flick the switch on then the sockets turn on I have it switched up because I don't want this to constantly drain my battery all right so why am I doing a video now take a look at this look at this this is the positive wire that went from the switch to the battery this is scary this is the wire that almost blew up my Jeep. Like if you look at this really close, it is scary looking. Now the sockets have been working fine for the last few months that I've had it installed. Like I've had no problems with it, right? Until last week. My wife and I were driving home and we were about two miles away from the house when we started to smell smoke. Now we thought it was probably just one of the restaurants because we were driving through an area that had a lot of restaurants and you know that smell that's in the air. We thought it was just that until we started to actually see smoke coming out of the vents. And I'm like, oh So I pulled over, jumped out the Jeep, ran to the hood, popped it open. I thought maybe I was overheating. And then I saw a wire that was on fire, right? So I ran all the way to the cargo area, grabbed the fire extinguisher, ran back. By the time I got back to the engine bay, the fire had already gone out. I'm guessing that maybe the wind kind of blew it off because it was kind of windy that day and it just kind of blew it away because it was just a really tiny fire. But I knew exactly which wire it was. It was this wire. It was connected straight to the battery. So I disconnected it from the battery, then drove the rest of the way home and it was fine. But this could have gotten so much worse. Like if I didn't see that coming and that fire would have gotten bigger or hit one of the fuel lines, that Jeep would have been gone by now. Basically, this is where the fire started. I started seeing smoke in my vents and then when I looked under the hood, there was a fire right here. If you could see it already melted this area off. Kind of scary because it's right close to the engine and I'm glad it didn't get caught on any fuel lines or anything like that and made this vehicle blow up. So here's where I feel the problem started. Here's my clutch. Underneath my clutch is where all the wires are coming in from the engine through the firewall. Well, the positive wire that was connected to the battery, I didn't realize was super taut and it was right behind the clutch. So every time I hit the clutch, that metal kept rubbing up against the taut wire and eventually started to fray it. Once that wire started to fray because I didn't have it protected, it started to basically expose the copper wiring inside, shorted it, started getting hot, and because it wasn't fused, well, fire started. 
I mean, it was really a bonehead rookie mistake. Like, it was dumb, right? But when I got the sockets, it was already fused up. Like, there were fuses built in with the sockets. So I'm like, okay, I don't need to fuse this. It just plugs right to the battery and I'm good to go. And that is where I made the biggest mistake. Let me just give you a quick, very basic lesson on how electrical currents work. Over here, you have your battery. On the battery, you have a positive terminal and you have a negative terminal. On the other side of that, you have a load. And what I mean by load is whatever it is that you're trying to power, whether that's lights or a winch, or in my case, a 12 volt socket. On that load, you also have a positive and a negative. For this to work, for this to turn on, you need to have electricity flowing from the positive terminal of your battery to the positive terminal of your load. Then it basically lights it up. And then from there, it exits the negative terminal and into the negative terminal of your battery. That completes the circuit. Sometimes you don't even need to go to the negative terminal. You can just go straight to what we call a ground. That's a metal surface on your vehicle that you basically just tap into and it just grounds the circuit. So once you have this, now the circuit is continuously flowing. What's gonna happen though, is if you have something here that lights up, like if this is a light, or in my case, there's a little tiny LED here, it's gonna continuously draw power from the battery and kill it unless I put something here to stop the flow of electricity, which is why we add a switch. So now they'll have a switch here on the positive terminal. When that's off, electricity will come here and stop and nothing happens. There's no circuit, right? All good. Once you turn it back on, electricity resumes because now the circuit is complete again. On the 12 volt sockets, they had on the positive terminal what we call a fuse. Okay, now why do you have fuses? Basically what a fuse does is that anytime the power gets to be too heavy, that fuse will break, right? So for example, the fuse that came with this was 15 amps, meaning that if the power was stronger than 15 amps, that fuse is gonna break and stop the electricity. It prevents all of this from overheating, which is why if you ever have any issues with electrical in your vehicle, the first thing you wanna do is see if you blew a fuse. Because once that fuse breaks, then the circuit is no longer complete. So, so far, so good. I installed it just like this, thought everything is great. Here's where the problem was though. This whole area of wire right here, from the positive terminal of the battery to the switch, there was nothing protecting it. The clutch was over here somewhere. And as the clutch started to rub up against this wire, it started to fray this wire right here, and it started to expose copper wire underneath. That copper wire started touching metal areas underneath the dash and suddenly started to create a short and there was no fuse there to break because remember the fuse is over here. Matter of fact, when I went to go and inspect all of this, everything from the switch to the 12 volt, it was fine. Like it was totally okay. It wasn't even burned or nothing because there's a fuse there and electricity wasn't going past the switch anyway. It started to heat up over here because of this little short. And eventually it got so hot that over here in the engine bay, a fire started. And that is what almost burned my vehicle down. Like this is it. This is that wire. This is that wire that was going from the battery to the switch. I mean, look what happened to it. Look how melted and hot it became. Like this is why this is dangerous. So to rewire, this is what we're going to do. Again, you have your battery. From the battery, you have your positive and your negative. On this side, you notice I put two because I actually have two 12 volt sockets that are there. One is a regular 12 volt and the other one has USB ports, right? So that also has this positive and negative. So let's draw it up again to have a complete circuit. So you have your positive to positive, and then you have your negative to negative, right? To power this up, then we're just gonna tap this positive to that positive and I'm gonna tap this negative to this negative. So basically now you have the two positives coming here, the two negatives going there, the circuit is complete. Again, we're going to add a switch to the positive terminal. So right over here, we have a little switch and that switch will basically allow power to go through or not. Again, on the positive terminals of these sockets, we have our fuses. So here's the fuse, one fuse is right here. Another fuse is right here. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do this time that's different than what I did before is right out of the battery, I'm going to put another fuse. This other fuse is the key component that I was missing before. 
This way now, if anything shorts over here again prior to the switch, if it becomes too hot for that fuse, this fuse will break, stop the electrical current completely, and basically save my vehicle from burning up and fire starting again. So now that I have it rerouted, I plugged it back into the battery, but this time I have it on an inline fuse with a 15 amp in there. And that just routes all the way across the engine bay and into through the firewall and into the vehicle. And then from the firewall, I have it coming down to the back. I made sure to protect it with some loom this time. And I tucked it as far away from the clutch as possible. So there's no way the clutch can hit it anymore. Then it sneaks underneath the plastic trim on the side, goes through the pillar. Then I got it coming underneath that pillar, underneath the carpet, along with all the other wiring that's from the factory that's down there, up the carpeting and then to the back. So removing this panel is pretty easy. We just have to first pop off that seatbelt cover, pop off this back piece, and take out the two screws at the bottom and they should just pop right off. Now we just pop the seatbelt cover off. It comes out pretty easy. Move it out of the way and then pop the back off, which should also pop off pretty easy. See, I can do it with one hand. Now back here, behind this thing, right around here somewhere, there is a bolt that you need to take off. This thing just comes right off and there's all the wiring. I have the wires coming out from the side where the carpet is to hide it. It goes to the switch and then from the switch I have two positive wires going to two fuses that the switches came with. And then that goes to the two positive terminals of the sockets. And then on the negative end, I got one wire going to ground and the other one spliced into it. And then come to the front. I have it on a switch and I put a cover on the switch. That way when I put cargo back here, it doesn't accidentally turn it on. So I just flick the switch on, that lights up, and then turn it off, that turns off. This way I can use this without having to turn the vehicle on every single time I wanna, you know, charge something. Anyway, that's it. That's the install. I'm not gonna go at length and bore you with videos of me routing the wires and plugging stuff up. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. And if you've done electrical work before, then this is pretty easy. Uh, if you have not, then just follow my schematics. I really just wanted to do this video because I wanted to highlight my mistake. I mean, like, take a look at this. This could have turned out really, really bad. You know, thank God I caught that fire before it got any bigger and that it didn't hit any fuel lines because if it did, that Jeep could have blown up. And worse, if we were still in it and couldn't get out, essentially, I put my wife and my life at risk because of my mistake. I got too overconfident. I was rushing the job. I wanted to just get those 12 volt sockets installed so I can start using them. And I didn't think my steps all the way through. I mean, like, I'm like, I've done this before. I can do this again. And didn't think about the little things that I should have done. I'm saying this because I don't want to discourage you from trying out your own electrical installs. I mean, you can do it. It is pretty simple. Just make sure you plan it correctly right? Make sure you have your schematics laid out and check all the boxes for safety, right? Make sure you put a fuse so that if it overheats, then the fuse will cut off and stop the circuit. Make sure that you cover your wires with some sort of loom so that it's not rubbing up against something and fraying the wires. That's it. If you follow all that, you'll be just fine. I hope you like this video. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos with people, and also follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. I know it's not really the best Instagram account right now because I haven't been able to go out with COVID and everything. We've just been stuck at home, but I guess this is the perfect time to start exploring. Maybe I'll go when the weather is better. That's it. Because right now it's like 98 degrees. I'm not camping at 98 degrees. So I'm going to wait till maybe October, November, and start getting back out there again and really beef up this Instagram account. In the meantime, give it a follow anyway. There are some great pictures on there. Again, my name is Asia Samson. This is Baptism Overland, and I'll see y'all next time. GoPro, stop recording.
GoPro, stop recording. Dang it.